the journey. Come wait a while, stay a while, welcome you'll be. From all you questioners looking for answers and searching for reasons and sense in it all. Come all you fallen and come all you broken, find strength for your body and food for your soul. Come to the feast, there is room at the table. Come, let us meet in this place. With the king of all kindness, he welcomes us in with the wonder of love and the power of grace. The wonder of love and the power of grace. Come those who worry about houses and money, and all those who don't have a care in the world. From every station and orientation, the helpless, the hopeless, the young and the old. Come to the feast, there is room at the table. Come, let us meet in this place. With the king of all kindness, who welcomes us in with the wonder of love and the power of grace. The wonder of love and the power of grace. Come all believers and dreamers and schemers, and come all you restless just searching for home. Shakers and givers and takers, the happy, the sad, the lost and alone. Come self-sufficient with wearied ambition and come those who feel at the end of the road. Fiery debaters and religion haters, accusers, abusers, the hurt and ignored. Come to the feast, there is room at the table. We have been called into the pastures of God where there is nurture and a place of rest. Safety and kindness among all. Let us draw near in the goodness of God to be with each other today and to praise the shepherd who has gathered us here Amen. You are all welcome today, as of course is Jake here with me, as we gather in our different places to worship God. Our opening song reminds us that we are of value. Come, all you vagabonds, come, all you don't belongs, winners and losers, come, people like me. Come, all you travellers, tired from the journey, come, wait a while, stay a while, welcomed you'll be, and you are all very welcome. We are grateful today for Sarah preaching for us and everyone who is taking part, but all of you. You, me, everyone, we are all part of this worship. We belong to God. We belong to each other. Today is the Sunday before Advent. Christmas, believe it or not, is just on the horizon. And today is known as the Sunday of Christ the King. Let us pray. God, we have been a scattered people, roaming, looking for places to call home. You have called us home, gathered us in, given us a land of belonging where all are welcome. You have sought us out, brought us in, and held us in this great story. Amen. So let's gather 
and let's sing. The kingdom of God is justice and joy. Psalm 95 Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving, and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his. For he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are his people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Some words of David Adam. You are the King of glory, O Christ. You are the everlasting Son of the Father. May your kingdom come in us on earth as it is in heaven. Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, often we struggle to find all the words we need to express our praise and love towards you. But it's not just in our words that we praise you, it's also in our actions. When we love our neighbour, when we feed the hungry, when we care for the needs of the homeless, when we look at your nature and make sure our actions in our lives do not damage or make that nature more destroyed than it already is that we care and live in this world in unity with it and all its people. Yet, Lord, we know we need to confess that often our actions do not match our words. We may speak words of praise and thanksgiving and love to you, but we have not loved our neighbour. We have not fed the hungry. We have not cared for the needs of the homeless. 
Our actions have brought destruction upon the glory of your creation. So Lord, we pray, forgive us. Forgive us for the selfishness that's often made, caused us to make those decisions. The selfishness that's caused us to hold back from the needs of another. And yes, often the deep-rooted fear that governs our hearts and minds. When you call us to love, for love is perfect, and love, perfect love drives away fear. So forgive us when fear and selfishness dominate our choices. And therefore we do not worship you. And as we confess our sins, the glory of God is this. The light of Christ is such that his light and his love consumes the darkness. Here's our confession and that everlasting love, that faithful love to all of us, forgives us, renews us, sustains us. And we become people of praise, not just in words, but also in action. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 34, and verses 11 to 16, and 20 to 24. And I'm reading from the Revised English Bible. For the Lord God says... Now I myself shall take thought for my sheep and search for them. As a shepherd goes in search of his sheep, when his flock is scattered for him in every direction, so I shall go in search of my sheep and rescue them, no matter where they were scattered in the day of cloud and darkness. I shall lead them out from the nations, gather them in from different lands and bring them home to their own country. I shall shepherd them on the mountains of Israel and by her streams. Wherever there is settlement, I shall feed them on good grazing ground, and their pasture will be Israel's high mountains. There they will rest in good pasture and find rich grazing on the mountains of Israel. I myself shall tend my flock and find them a place to rest, says the Lord God. I shall search for the lost, recover the straggler, bandage the injured, strengthen the sick, and leave the healthy and strong to play, and give my flock their proper food. Therefore, the Lord God says to them, Now I myself shall judge between the fat sheep and the lean. You push aside the weak with flank and shoulder. You butt them with your horns until you have scattered them in every direction. Therefore, I shall save my flock, and they will be ravaged no more. I shall judge between one sheep and another. I shall set over them one shepherd to take care of them my servant David. He will care for them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, shall be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Amen. A very big thank you to Nev for leading our opening prayers, to Elliot for reading the Lord's Prayer, and to Angela for reading from the prophet Ezekiel. And now we're going to sing a song called Everyone Needs Compassion. It ends with a challenge. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King, Jesus. So as we sing, and as we go about our lives each day, let's shine. needs compassion love that's never failing let mercy 
fall on me Everyone needs forgiveness The kindness of a Savior The hope of nations read from Paul's first letter to the Ephesians. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. 
the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all these things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills everything in every way. Amen. I read from Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. The sheep and the goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. Was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. Needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in, pres in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Amen. A big thank you to Susan for reading those Bible passages to us. And in a few moments we're going to reflect on them and on the Ezekiel reading as well as Sarah preaches to us. But before we do that, we sing together an old song, probably around 25 years old now, that has certainly stood the test of time. Who is the God that we worship? The song reminds us, gentle saviour, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, love eternal, faithful and true. So we sing together, King of Kings, Majesty.
there is in this week's readings, so much for us to take away and mull over. I would, even before I begin, therefore, encourage you to take them away and to reflect on them yourselves throughout the week. What do they say to you? This week, as we focus on Christ the King, what does it mean to be followers of a King of compassion? Of a King who responds instinctively to human need? If you have a pen and paper to hand, you might want to write down some of your answers to the following questions. If I asked you to name a good leader, who would you think of and why? If I asked you to name a bad leader, who would you think of and why? If you were asked to write down the qualities of a good shepherd, what would they be? How similar would these qualities be to the qualities of the good leader you named earlier? In our reading from Ephesians, Paul describes God using very conventional terms. He speaks of God's glory, wisdom, riches, immeasurable greatness, rule, authority, power and dominion. These are words shaped by the world in which Paul was trying to lead and guide the fragile new community of the church. Words that describe leadership in terms that they would have been familiar with. In a world ruled by emperors and kings who had no hesitation in exercising violence to secure their position. Ephesus was a place of power, a centre of imperial influence and a centre of religious power. It was a place in which many focused their thoughts on power. Power to make things happen in the world. Power to influence people and events. Power to gain wealth and health. Power to bring about the downfall of those who oppose you. A world, you might say, that doesn't sound so unfamiliar. In the midst of all of this, Paul is desperate to emphasise that the greatest display of power the world has ever seen was when God raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at God's right hand. Jesus, who now sits enthroned over the whole cosmos and who exercises power in a very different way. But Paul recognises that to see this power and to truly understand the meaning of God's kingdom riches and greatness requires a fresh gift of wisdom from God and the ability to understand power differently. The verses from the Gospel according to Matthew come at the end of a long discourse in which Jesus has denounced his own people, especially the would-be leaders, for their failure to live as good people should. Here Jesus declares that he will judge people on how they treat other people. Those who act justly, who love mercy, who walk humbly, and who treat others with compassion and kindness, will be blessed. This sense of being blessed opens and closes Jesus' ministry in the Gospel of Matthew. Cast your mind back to the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. The list goes on. But here those who are blessed are blessed because they act out of an instinctive response to need, out of a desire to see justice done. And the same is true in Matthew 25. People are judged by the care and concern that they show to others in need. The emphasis is on just action that merits rewards from Christ the King. What matters here is our openness to respond compassionately to human need. Tom Wright writes, Justice is one of the most profound longings of the human race. If there is no justice, then deep within ourselves we know that something is not right. Whilst justice is hard to define, and harder still to practice, it has never stopped human beings and societies from seeking it, praying for it, and working to find ways of doing justice better. Our longing for justice comes from our Creator, from God, whose eventual judgment will be just and will put the world to rights. Part of the biblical image of the Son of Man, of Christ the King, is that justice will be done at last through him. In the words of Professor Alan Bosak, Jesus is justice, and justice is Jesus. Justice is found in the empowering love and grace of Jesus. Our reading today from Ezekiel puts across most strikingly this sense of justice. It too describes a separation of people based on the way that they treat others. In the reading, the greatness of God is demonstrated in God's capacity to find, protect, provide for and guide God's people. God is presented as an alternative shepherd to the flock and described as one who is diligent and compassionate, who will gather those who have been scattered, bind up the injured, strengthen the weak and provide sustenance for them. This is, however, in direct contrast to those who establish themselves as leaders but who exercise an unjust form of power and control. I always find it interesting when verses are left out from the lectionary to see what they have to say. In today's reading, verses 17 to 19 are missing, but I believe they speak volumes. They read as follows. Is it not enough for you to feed on good pasture, but you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture? When you drink clear water, must you foul the rest with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet and drink what you have fouled? With your feet. I myself, it continues in verse 20, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you have pushed with flank and shoulder, and butted at all the weak animals with your horns, until you have scuttered them far and wide. We are perhaps more familiar with the term fat cats than fat sheep. But Ezekiel is clearly condemning the practices where people with power get richer while the powerless get poorer. Whilst Ezekiel appears to address leaders, as Jesus did, this does not get us off the hook. 
These comments are not exclusive to people in leadership. The disparity between rich and poor in the world has never been greater than it is today. None of us need travel far from our homes to witness the disparity for ourselves. And yet we manage to convince ourselves that there will be no real consequences to the way that we live our lives. As we feed ourselves, why do we not realise that we too are the fat sheep who push the starving millions away from our green fields? Judgment here bears the human face of the neglected. God is not far away and is not easy to deceive. We cannot plead that we did not know what God wanted of us. We know perfectly well what the hungry, thirsty, estranged, naked, sick people around us need. The human face of Jesus is all too recognisable today. I am reminded here of the hymn by Stuart Townend. Come all you vagabonds, come all you don't belongs, winners and losers, Come people like me. Come all you fallen and come all you broken. Find strength for your body and food for your soul. Come to the feast. There is room at the table. Come let us meet in this place with the King of all kindness who welcomes us in with a wonder of love and a power of grace. Two things strike me about these words. Who are the vagabonds and the don't belongs in today's unjust society? And what are we as churches and as people doing to welcome them in and to ensure that they are all treated justly? How do we recognise that none of us are perfect, that all of us fall short before God, and not one of us acts justly, walks humbly, or loves mercy all of the time? Yet by the love and grace of God, of Christ the King, we are all welcome at the table. Mary Glover, who used to help run a food project in one of the poorest parts of Washington, D.C., always prayed before the hundreds of needy people came through the door. Lord, we know you will be coming through this line today, so help us to treat you well. Which was her way of saying, help us to treat all people as we would treat you. Similarly, Mother Teresa is known to have talked about the way in which she helped some of the poorest people in India as ministering to Jesus in his most distressing disguises. Where we might we encounter Jesus in disguise in our community today? And how will we treat him? As we look to the beginning of Advent and wait with anticipation the coming of the Christ child, the coming of Christ the King, how might we express compassion and kindness to others and respond instinctively to need as followers of Christ, the King of compassion? Let us pray. Loving God, in whom we live and move and have our being. As we go about our business this week, may we tread with care, consume with moderation and share with generosity so that all your people 
might delight in your goodness and share in your riches. In Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Sarah, and thank you for your ministry in our circuit. And thank you to Debbie as well, and all those who share in the life and the work of our churches. We're now going to sing the hymn which I particularly love because it was written by my old principal at Wesley House in Cambridge, Ivor Jones, a great minister a great man and a good friend. So we sing, Christ our King before creation. Christ our King before creation, life before all life he began, crowned in deep humiliation by your partners in God's plan. Make us humble in believing and believing bold to pray. Lord, forgive us self-deceiving Come and reign in us today. Lord of time and the Lord of history, living when the world is fed, faith to wrestle with the mystery of a God who loves and cares. Make us humble in and believing bold to pray, Lord, by grace beyond conceiving, come and reign in us today. Word that ends our long debating, life of God which sets us free, through your body recreating, Life as life is meant to be. Make us humble in believing and believing bold to pray. Lord, in us your aim achieving, come and reign in us today. And now we come to our prayers of intercession. There is a silent response to these prayers. When I say, God of glory, can you say, hear our prayer? God of glory, hear our prayer. Let us pray to God, revealed in the Son, through the glory of the Father, and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, you call us into a relationship with one another. And even though we're unable to meet each other face to face, we know as Christians we are connected to each other by your love. God of glory, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you call us into a relationship with your created world. We pray for the world, thinking especially of those areas which are in conflict or those that are in unrest and those affected by turmoil and war. God of glory, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you call us into a relationship with those that do not know you. Your Holy Spirit empowers us, guides us and challenges us to reach out to those that do not know you or your ways. God of glory, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those in need and all those that we know and love, for those ill or unwell, either at home or in hospital. We pray for all those who may be grieving and mourning. And finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves, 
for faith and for hope that your love and Holy Spirit will flood our lives and for your grace to pass those gifts to all we know and love. God of glory, hear our prayer. Amen. A huge thank you to Stuart for leading our prayers of intercession. You are very much appreciated, Stuart. Now we turn to the hymn for the healing of the nations. This hymn is the gospel in a nutshell. What does verse 2 say? Show us how through care and goodness fear will die and hope increase. Let's live a life of care and goodness so that others may see Christ in us. So we sing together for the healing of the nations. Let us pray. O God of kindness, send us out into your world. Help us to see those moments where we can be kind. Help us to live generous and loving lives so that we might see you within these walls and beyond these walls. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us, now and for evermore. Amen.
Move us into action. 